Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for dialing into the CIF webinar um, on the topic of working safely at height. On behalf of the CIF, we're delighted to be joined by Graeme Aykroyd um, of uh, Select Access. So Graeme is going to talk us through some of the principles of working safely at height. Hi folks and welcome to the CIF webinar at Working Safely at Height. I am privileged to be invited by the CIF to present to you today. Working Safely at Height was by the Select Access Safety Systems and we're part of the Select Group of Companies. And this presentation is in support of the Construction Safety Week on the 22nd to the 26th of October 2018. Working at height by its nature is potentially a high risk activity, working on residential projects where heights are low to working in the industri industrial industries using rope access and other skilled methods of access. In all occasions, consideration to the hierarchy of risk must be considered. We all have a responsibility when working at height from the employees, the employers and our clients. Please refer to the reference documents highlighted on the CIF webpage at www.cif.ie forward slash safety week. By working collectively to identify the risks and mitigating and providing the appropriate equipment and training, we can ensure the safety of all involved. Remember, we can be working at height while standing and at ground level. When we discuss the hierarchy of risks, there are key elements that we must consider. Firstly, avoid working at height where possible. If it is required, look at using existing access routes to provide protection to the individual. Use or provide collective protection. Prevent falls using personal fall protective equipment. Mitigate using collective measures to limit the distance of the fall. Mitigate using personal fall prevention equipment. Minimize the consequences using collective measures and minimize the consequences using specific training and instruction. Working at height is caused cause of many incidents and accidents in Irish construction. The industry is working constantly to prevent incidents and accidents, and the understanding of the dangers of work at height has greatly improved over the years. However, these still occur. Of the five fatalities in the construction sector in 2018, up to and including the 12th of October, work at height was a factor in four of the five incidents. Reverting back to our hierarchy of risk, we asked the question, do we need to work at height? Are there alternatives? Do we need to access the space? For example, drones are used widely to complete inspection work, whether it be the wind industry or others. But we then decide through our risk analysis that access is required. Existing protection provided by building structure at Accessing mechanical and electrical services for PPMs or planned preventative maintenance is a key item in most facilities and by design, designing the access, this allows engineers to access from a position of safety using walkways, guardrail and access ladders. Considering collective protection, by using equipment, the employer can provide a safe work position for the operative by considering collective protection. For example, scaffolding, both fixed and mobile, erected and inspected weekly by a qualified, competent company. An MEWP or mobile elevated work platform systems provided with full documentation and inspection certificates and must be operated by qualified operators with full harness training. The use of temporary ladders, a key item. All ladders must be inspected by a competent person and tagged as safe for use. 
Ladders are considered when all other options of access for low level works have been exhausted. By design, ladders afford access for only short durations and for light work. Three points of contact must be maintained when using straight ladders, and this limits their application. The risk assessment for the works in the instance of straight ladders is a key to demonstrate that all alternatives have been exhausted. When the risk assessment is completed and the use of the ladder is justified, key stages must be considered. Firstly, the manual handling for the movement of the ladder to the work location. The conditions underfoot, both for moving the ladder and locating the ladder at the access point of access. Confirming that there are no live services overhead. Ensuring the space required to achieve the four to one footing position of the ladder to ensure, ensure stability. That the works will allow the operative to maintain three points of contact. The operative's body must foot the ladder. Alternatively, if su suitable anchor point has been identified, the operative, who must be harness trained, can attach themselves to work more freely. If the ladder is being used for access, then it must be restrained to prevent movement and extend one meter above the roof line. Examples of alternative ladders, such as podium ladders and steps, has increased greatly, allowing access and position of safety for the operative. With designs which allow the extension of the unit, they give operatives the flexibility to access areas safely and complete their works. In all cases, the units must be inspected and tagged. We move over to scaffolding. Scaffolding provides both safe means of access and a position of safety for operatives to carry out their works. However, like all means of access, the installation must be risk assessed by a competent person to confirm that the appropriate system is installed for the project. Scaffold must be installed by a qualified, competent person and installed in accordance with the scaffold design. Correctly erected scaffold provides collective protection for the operatives with the standard tow board, mid rail and top rail. Operatives must always refer to the scaffold tag prior to ascending the structure to ensure it has been inspected within the last seven days by a competent person. The erection of scaffold by untrained operatives, both fixed and mobile, must not be carried out. This also applies to any adjustments made to the scaffold. The employer must ensure that erectors are fully qualified. And then we move on to the use of fall protection equipment. We consider this when we have exhausted all other means of access. This requires the use of certified inspected equipment by qualified operatives, working to the risk assessment and to a detailed methodology. Equipment selection, the different options. Access using collective protection, as we've already discussed. We move then to work restraint. Systems that allow access, but prevent the operative from moving out with a position of safety. Fall arrest, the use of PFPE to allow the operative to access the areas and minimize the impact of the fall. And laterally, which will not be covered later, is industrial rope access, where specialist operatives working under a strict hierarchy, utilize rope access systems with PFPE to access areas where alternative methods are not possible or practical. Work restraint prevents the operative from moving out with a position of safety by limiting their movement, thus preventing a fall. The PFPE for these systems include a full body harness and a fixed length or adjustable lanyard. The use of work restraint 
as an access method relies on the provision of suitable certified anchor point or system, such as certified cableways, certified fixed anchor points, inspected structural steel with a certified attachment, wire or fabric sling, or scaffolding hook, signed off by an EHS specialist, and structural steel by the engineers that it is fit for purpose. Full arrest equipment is employed where an operative is required to access a space where, due to the access requirements, they will be in a position where a fall from height could potentially occur. Due to the level of shock absorption needed to be, needs to be incorporated into the system to ensure that the impact force to the operative in the event of a fall is minimal. The PFPE for the system includes a full body harness, and an energy absorption lanyard or inertia system. Fall arrest systems require anchorage, which is, which as per the work restraint package must be fully certified and fit for purpose. The anchorage must be certified for the applica application of a fall arrest system. As an overview, prior to commencing any work at height, you must ensure that you and your team have completed the required training to complete the access and task safely. Read and confirm understanding of both the method statement and the risk assessment by all involved. Confirm all inspections certificates are in place and both for your PFPE and the anchor points which may be employed. Check, the, check current and expected weather conditions where applicable. Apply for and complete all required permits, such as roof access, access permits. Movement at height. In some instances, due to the nature of the workplace, you may be required to move at height from an entry point in a position of safety to the work location. In the first instance, this must be ca captured in the company method statement and risk assessment to ensure that no other method is available and that the correct equipment is selected for the task. When moving at height, it is imperative that the operative maintains a point of attachment at all times. This means the use of a double lanyard system which allows the operative to maintain a point of contact when changing the attachment of the second lanyard, or appropriately known as 100% tie-off. Ultimately, stop and consider, risk assess and review. Don't be a statistic. Many thanks.